find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Get something. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Internet. Today is September sixteenth, two thousand fourteen, and this is. <laughs> The Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. This is episode 43 from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I am Malango uh, at Rambling Mango. And as usual, we have Sorg of Sorgatron Media. What's going on, Mike? I'm here, uh, Sorgatron, meeting it all day long here on podcast. Oh, my collar is crooked. Look at that. What is going on there? What's oh happening? man, you're going all, all video the, from and from sorry, New York, guys. all the way from New York. <laughs> we have Mad Mike. How's it going? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. I watched a movie I was excited to see this week, and it wasn't in theaters because the theater movie sucked. Yes, theater movies were blah. So much blah. Is that your professional opinion? That is my professional opinion. So much blah. That the top movie only pulled in twenty four million. No good deed. And second Guardians movie. was number three. Yes, second movie was Dolphin Tell Two. Oh, <laughs> they've been pushing that one hard. Oh man, I mean Guardians for the last two weeks, I think, pulled in the number one spot. Mm-hmm. Which... Guardians is now the top grossing movie of twenty fourteen. I think. Yeah. Jeez. Or it's like the first one to hit three hundred million. Yeah, they're sitting right now at 305 and uh, just shy of 306 million. And the way things are going, they'll probably get a little bit more. But yeah, the, yeah, theater theaters have just been blah. And that is my professional opinion. <laughs> so, hey, uh, the trailer that we watched was Equalizer. Uh, Denzel Washington's coming back in that iconic uh, bad boy dark role where he just kills people, and we love it. What do you think of that extended trailer, Mad Mike? Uh, well, Equalizer is the only movie I want to see in theaters in September, so that's exciting. Um, it it just looks like a fun flick. It looks like um, it's kind of similar to uh, oh. That movie he did with the, where he was protected the little girl, Man on Fire. Yeah, yeah. It looks very similar to that, and I love that movie. And I have a feeling I will enjoy this one a lot too, because I mean, who who's a bear badass in Denzel? If you really break it down, exactly. And I, I I agree with you too. I love that movie, Man on Fire. So this kind of feels like the same thing, just in a different setting and scenario. So I mean. <laughs> Sadly, too, this is also the only movie worth seeing in theaters this year, which is crazy. And, I mean, that kind of rolls into the next question where, uh, you know, there was an article today on Empire Online talking about uh, the future of movies and movies moving forward. Maybe crowdfunding is the new way on how we receive movies and also talking about how independent movies might start coming to us basically i think this argument's been going on for quite some time basically over just you know we will start to receive in the future the way we receive media through for movies will be at our own home and in our own living room um is this talking about the uh oh crap now i'm uh the uh the the uh chris evans movie from this summer for instance because I know that was kind of an independent thing that was like direct day and day and date for a uh, uh, home release in theaters. Um, I think you're going to see that uh, uh, Kevin Smith's been doing that where it's been 
uh, a little bit of a theater tour, and then digital. Like you're you're seeing that's what he did with Red State. Yeah, he did with Red State and a couple other things. I think too. uh, uh, super groovy cartoon movies to be in, for instance, which apparently is on Netflix. I, I have to check it out. Um, it is. Uh, you don't need to check it out. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, really and, that bad. Is Tusk doing this? I think Tusk is a theatrical release because I've seen posters for it. But it's not everywhere. Theater. But it's not everywhere. Um, I saw posters for it in Poughkeepsie. Okay, but well, like well, we like we. If it's in Poughkeepsie, it's everywhere. I'll look it up. <laughs> I, I i'd say it's a fair as- assumption at mm-hmm. least like it might be a limited uh theatrical run but i'm pretty sure it does have a wide theatrical it run. is uh, well, well uh the, the notice uh chachi said was that i think it was on all the amcs in the area um but not mm-hmm. every theater and it does look like a weird movie to begin with so. Oh well, have you heard the podcast about it? it's it's gonna be a weird movie no i haven't <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the, the the movie actually do its own podcast for no, the movie? I believe was derived from an idea that came up on the podcast. Huh. It was it was derived from a story that they read online, like um, through a Saskatchewan newspaper, and then they just started spitballing and talking about it, and then they were like, "This would be a great horror movie." So Kevin Smith told everyone who listened to the podcast if they want him to try and work on this movie. Um, respond hashtag walrus yes and that's what they did <laughs> yep yep and um and now he has a tri- he has a trilogy of canadian horror movies that he's working on Jeez. like one is called yoga hosers and oh what is the other one it's gonna bother me that i can't think of it now but tusk yoga hosers and uh Something else too. I and one of them has his daughter and I think Johnny Depp's daughter in it. He calls it the True oh. North trilogy. Yes. Um. Wow. Uh, yoga hosers and moose jaws. Yes, moose He's jaws, which one. is just jaws with a moose. <laughs> like, like that's that's what he said the movie is. It's jaws with a moose. Good, instead of good a for him. He's at this point where he can make the movies he wants to make and his audience wants apparently. Um, and, and yeah. I know that Spodcast has been very, you know, it, yeah, they spitball a lot of stuff. Like when it was like him and I think Paul Dini, perhaps. Oh, when, the the Batman prequel. The Batman prequel they wanted. To I push. want that so much more than Gotham. <laughs> so much more than Gotham, Sorg. <laughs> I want that so much more than Gotham. I do too. But we're talking about like his smodcast basically, because I mean, um, he he's kind of said I'm not doing movies anymore, and then and then now he's doing movies because people he had a he had a good idea. But um, but he got to do other creative things, you know, and and he's doing the outside the box model. Uh, Red State, like you said, it, it, it toured theaters, and they did a Q and A, you know, and it was very mm-hmm. limited, you know, and then it was on like a couple months later, it was on like every on demand, you know. That you could get, you know. Uh, to, Red State was really good. If it you was Red State. Go see Red State. It was very good. I don't remember if I actually saw Red State. Malengo, it's on Netflix, I think. Watch Red State. Trust me, it's super, super good. I mean, how do you guys feel about like just the simple fact that the way crowd or the way crowdfunding is going, like? we could get movies like this as long. I mean, I guess like you said, uh, sword, as long as you back the person doing this and they have enough fans, they can almost get it done. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's been $5.1 billion last year went through, uh, growing sectors, like not just Kickstarter, like GoFundMe, Indiegogo, Rocket Hub. And I mean, like from Spike Jones or yeah, Spike Jones to Zach Braff, like, I mean, that's that's how we freaking got Veronica Mars. You got yeah. you also got to think about like um, we're disseminating that thing of like some guy in Hollywood has to take the temperature of what he thinks is going to work and make him millions and millions of dollars uh, uh, three, four years from now uh, and take a big bet on it versus you do the crowdfunding things. And I don't think the crowdfundings are so much in a Veronica Mars case to say we need money to do this it's a way to prove interest your audience is already there or these other projects that maybe don't have an already made uh, audience of a returning thing like a veronica mars um and i think i think in kevin smith's case 
Um, he has his audience. He's cultivating his audience independently. Everybody's come to him because they've watched the Jersey uh, series or Jay Silent Bob or however they were introduced to him. Um, um, love the stuff he talks about in his podcast, which gets who knows how many hits. Um, and he's able to spitball stuff and get a genuine reaction right away. It's like this is the promise of social media on a grand scale. And he's he's taking advantage of it and putting out what looks to be it might be some pretty great movies. Um, this is somebody that was very frustrated with the Hollywood way of doing things and yeah. the budgets and the marketing. And it's one of those like uh, his fr- here here any shows talking about his frustration on Zack and Miri make a porno. Uh, when that came out, or even Mallrats a little bit. If it wasn't for the, the advertising budget that didn't do squat, they probably would have made out well. I think it was mostly Cop Out that really soured him. Oh, whole, Cop Out. Uh, Cop Out, I yeah. think it was the final straw. Yeah, yeah, that, that was really the straw that broke the diehards back. Aww. Anyways, Malenko, what else is going on in the news? So keeping on the same theme of bashing September, uh, if a scary movie comes out in September and nobody screams... Did that scary movie really come out? That is my question to you. No good deed. And as above, so below. Two movies that I think absolutely sucked. And so much that I didn't even go see them. But a co-worker of mine said As Below was uh, interestingly scary. And uh, based on the reviews for Rotten Tomato for No Good Deed, I mean, it did come in number one this, this week. But my question, I mean, going along the sense that nothing's coming out, does it seem weird when you, when the producer or, you know, the studio says, let's put out this scary movie in September? Are they basically just throwing in the towel as a watch? No, they're they're throwing it. They want to be the first ones to come out before the Halloween season starts. But people aren't thinking about Halloween right now. They're thinking about football. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, yeah, yeah. this is when draft day should have come out. Yes, that would have made so much money if it came out more around football. You, you're coming around in around football or around, you know, draft day. Yeah. One, one or the other. It could have done either, and it did neither of them. So, yeah, I mean, I don't even know. I think usually – I usually go with a cartoon – actually now on uh, Halloween because I, I think that um, the book of the living dead, I think there's a, I don't remember what the actual name of that movie, but it's a uh, stop animation. It's a, it's like a claymation type of thing. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I'm going to go see that. Cause I, you know, I, but it's just weird. I don't know. Besides your like typical, like held camera, handheld camera like we're gonna run at night while something slits our throat i don't know i don't i don't know what's coming out in october that's worth checking out is it weird to say that i miss the saw movies no i don't think so because i mean you could almost always count on one around october and now like we're just getting a lot of movies about creepy dolls and demons Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. And I, I, don't, I don't need any of those in my life. I, I do not care to see them. What is it that, that, that the movie industry can't capitalize on on Halloween anymore? You know? Or maybe it's just they always push too hard when we had, you know, 10 Friday the 13th. I don't know why we can't have, like, a Friday the 13th where they're so campy and funny that people will go see them. Like, that's the kind, Jason of, that's X? The kind of horror movie I want to see. Jason X? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I saw Jason X for the first time a couple months ago. Oh. I laughed my ass off. It's it so was great. Amazing. It's so absolutely great. It, actually, you want to know the only movie I think that's coming out in October that I'm looking forward to? See No Evil 2. Hmm. The WWE film about um, Kane being a hook-wielding maniac. I think that's coming out in October. I'm not positive, <laughs> but... I don't care when that's coming out. If it's in theaters, I'm going to see it. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Rotten Tomato right now. I don't see anything in October that seems awesome. Nope, yeah. October 21st. October 21st, 2014. It's coming out. Oh, yeah, we got the really bad Dracula coming out. Uh, that Dracula movie looks... It it just looks like Jon Snow had a really bad day. Yeah. 
And you got Fury, or Fury, uh, is it Fury or, no, Fury? Whatever. That looks, I mean, that's not, that's not really in that genre. The Book of Life and maybe that are the, are the two that I might throw money at. And the fact that they're coming out on the same weekend is kind of just pointless. Yeah, all right, whatever. Uh, from on. from the chat room, from the chat room, just to, to catch up or backtrack a second, uh, Chachi, the resident Kevin Smith expert, uh, he says he's uh, huge on supporting indie movie scene right now. Actually, he supported a few indie movies uh, that he's come across uh, over the years, too, through his SMOD, uh, SMOD something, uh, SMOD Industries or something like that. Uh, oh, those movie makers, right? No, no, I think it's something else. I think it's something else. Um, also, F Potato Salad, and yes, it was Zach and Miri they got soured on, um, and watch Kevin Smith burn in hell for, I think, that story. So, <gasps> Dear White People comes out in October. What? That's Dear an indie. White. It's a Sundance. Are you telling yeah. me something? Uh, it's... That movie speaks to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, that's not till late uh, October. Go look, go look for the trailer. It's pretty interesting. In the in the funny, you'll make your you want to hug yourself afterwards. White people, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with. That. Wait, will we want to hug ourselves if we are white people, or we yes. just want to hug white people? I think white people want to hug white people. What is, as wait, well wait, as no, no, wait, 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 no, okay, no, no. What is the premise of this movie? Because I feel really uncomfortable right now. I'm more curious as how, how it's gonna make me feel. You're now. really, you're really selling us on this. It's a, uh, it's just sad. It's all satire humor. It's all stuff that we. I mean, Mad Mike lives in New York, so he's probably already heard all of these. And I mean, and Sorg, you grew up in a town with one stoplight, so I'm sure <laughs> you're also aware of all of this. <laughs> All right, hey. So I'm still I'm still not clear on this movie. <laughs> yeah, well, we can't show the trailer, so I don't know what well, else. What's it, what's it about? Is it is it just like a family that? No, it's uh, it's basically um, a black African American lady is basically making rants at uh, like she's in a film class. She's basically basically just at a liberal arts college, and she's kind of talking to the audience to camera saying. This is why we don't like white people. White people, and then she goes through the checklist. Oh. And so in the classroom, the white people are kind of like making the obvious like things that white people would say in that scenario. Okay. And we kind of just laugh at it. But in in the weird, because I, I don't think it's going to be a mainstream. I don't think it's being a mainstream release. So I think it's just going to be one of those like indie releases, but uh, I mean it, it it got best feature at Sundance, so that's saying something. <laughs> I think it'll be good. I just you know, it's it sounds interesting. It just it's just like a satire of race relations, basically. Yeah, basically. Okay. Um. Hey, since we might as well talk about something related to comic books. Let's talk about DC. I'm sure you guys have all seen the uh, the Batmobile, right? Ah, uh, oh, the uh, I've heard it's the upskirt of the Batmobile. Yes, this is the Batman doesn't believe in using weapons, but he's outfitted this with semi-automatic weapons. Yes, um, because Batman and guns go together like <laughs> Batman and guns. Oh, they're going Tim Burton this. You watch. Uh, so on. Uh, Badass Digest. They had an article that basically the headline says the Marvel Netflix shows will be a grittier than the movies. And that made me think, I think, yes, we've already agreed that DC completely missed the spot. But I think this is the right direction that these movies should go. I think the the actual movies themselves should, you know, relate to a very wide open net audience. If they can get away with a darker type feel, like in Batman the Dark Knight, like, yeah, I think that's okay. But for the most part, like, what we got with the Avengers, what we got with Guardians, I think that's where we could have that lighthearted, like, fun, really good movie. And then let's get darker on Netflix. I think well, that's yeah, the, the shows they're coming out with for Netflix, I mean, the first one is Daredevil. Daredevil 
in and of itself is going to be dark just because that's who the character is. Yeah. Like, he lives in Hell's Kitchen. He's a blind lawyer, for Christ's sake. Like, um, that's just like that is the character that you go dark with. It's not like trying to make Superman dark. It's Daredevil is kind of Marvel Marvel's Batman a little bit. And the rest of them are really the same um the same world too. They're Hell's Kitchen, New Yorky, that crime drama ish thing. There's some powers in there, but it's not it's not anything I mean, like those other ones. I mean, you can have the heroes for hire be a little bit campier, but yeah. but there's a, there's still a lot of drama in Luke Cage and Iron Fist, so there's this one comment that they write in the article that states that even though Agents of Shield uh, feels utterly disconnected from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, there's the possibility that Netflix shows, which will feature characters people actually know and like, could interact with the movies. I do don't. Ag- I don't agree with that assertion at all. I don't agree with that at all. I think that's just someone who doesn't like Agents of Shield. If you watch the second half of Agents of Shield, that felt that it felt like I was watching the sequel to Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Hmm. It just felt like I was watching it from a different point of view, without the dude with the big shield attached to his arm. I like, love, I and mean, I love the intertwining they do because I, I think they really did something there that made you say, "Oh, I need to catch this opening weekend." Or else I'm not going to know what's going on on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. next week. Yep. And that first, thing I, first thing I said as soon as Winter Soldier was over, I'm like, what the hell is this to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Like, yep. I was so excited to see what would happen next. Yep. Yep. That was the first thing I said. Because I'm like, what What are What are they agents of anymore? I, they, I and they, they sprinkle. They're very good about sprinkling that between the movies and everything. Uh, I was listening to a show today where they said they went back and uh, watched like a few of the first, like I think at first Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man, and then Avengers for because their ten mm-hmm. year old wanted to watch it because they loved Guardians so much. And realizing how many little things they did across those movies, the setup for mm-hmm. Avengers is amazing. And and you well, do and you do catch it even more like back way through there. If you watch if you watch Agents of Shield again, like the episode right before Captain America Two comes out in theaters, Agent Sitwell is assigned to the boat that he's on in Captain America. Mm-hmm. Like in that episode, so it people who don't think that connects to the Marvel universe are just not paying attention. Very well stated. All right, I think we got time, Mike, or Sword, we got time for one more story. So yep. which one do you guys want to talk about? Uh, the synopsis for Age of Ultron getting released or the fall lineup for what TV shows we actually care about Let's, and the fact that there are no good television shows coming on, basically. I am, uh, because I feel like we've done the TV show thing to death because I'm just going to end up talking about all the uh, comic book stuff again. Um, but Avengers, I read the synopsis today. I think it's very interesting. Mike, you I'm, about the same? I'm super excited about Age of Ultron. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, just the synopsis alone, just read like so, reads like a who's who of the marvel universe like (laughs) hey so you have iron man black widow thor captain america nick fury all teaming up to fight ultron who has created the vision and you have scarlet witch and quicksilver (laughs) i'm trying to to pick it apart this is like an apple invite whenever those come out you're trying to like piece it and like (laughs) what is the new iphone gonna look like what do you mean wish we could say more what do you mean so you're looking at this thing like a couple interesting uh things they did they do refer to wanda and uh pietro by their names not as quicksilver and scarlet witch but Mm -hmm. they're not yet right so i think that's that's appropriate um uh they did point out one article i read the the people playing uh uh those two are are husband and wife in godzilla an interesting connection there um i i haven't watched godzilla so but but read that um 11 minutes sorg what 11 minutes of godzilla 11 minutes of godzilla (laughs) Damn it. 11 minutes uh but no it, it, it does it, it, they, and they do confirm like agent hill uh nick fury coming back on this one like, um, it almost seems like they don't have enough room to put all these people in one movie yet somehow they will make it work mm-hmm. like i've heard rumors that it's supposed to be two different avenger teams and they get like separated so it's kind of like like one group is over here and one group is over here which would make oh. a lot more sense so you don't have everyone on screen at the same time, but yeah, yeah. 
it's, it's a lot. It, awesome. The great thing is you have all these characters that didn't have to get set up. <laughs> so we just we just pick up with Captain America where we left off, right? For instance. Yeah, it's, it seems like it. Well, I think the other good thing with even the idea of them splitting up teams, it definitely will highlight a lot of your more human uh, characters like uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye. Like, I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to highlight them a lot more, not going up against, like, alongside of a Thor or, you know, Hulk. So that'll definitely be cool to see how they play that out. Yeah, I'm definitely excited. Uh, this comes out May 2015, so. Not soon enough. No. That's when it comes out. Not soon enough. All right, guys. Well, let's move on to uh, what uh, we Malenko, watch. Before, before we go what we watch, I do have to say, um, I didn't put it in the doc. Yeah. There's one thing that DC announced that might be happening this week that I'm super excited about. I put it in the Facebook group. Yes. They might be making a Teen Titans TV show. Oh, I did see that. A live action. <laughs> DC, DC, I, I don't ask you for much. I know you're I know you're watching. Please. <laughs> please do this. Please. I don't care. I don't care if it's bad. I don't. I honestly don't care if it's bad at this point. I just want to see it happen. Thank you. Love and hugs, Med Mike. <laughs> nice. Well, sticking with you, man, Mike, what did you watch this weekend? I finally got to see Draft Day. Oh, yeah. I finally got to see it. Uh, it was on the on demand on my cable provider, and I loved it. And to me, it's a better Superman movie than Man of Steel because Pa Kent finds a way to get uh, Superman to play for his football team. Nice. Because it has Tom Welling and uh, um, what's his name from Man of Steel? Um, Kevin Costner. So yeah, that that to me is the best Superman uh, movie of the year. Yeah, I, I, I watched it twice. Once I saw it when it came out in theaters. The second time I saw it to prep me for football coming back, and I enjoyed them both. Both times. What about you, Sword? Oh, I already see what you want. <laughs> no, yeah, it was a very, very interesting, busy weekend. I have settled into this pattern, though, that I come home from shooting football on Friday nights. I, I capture my tapes and convert them for my for my the guy I'm doing them for. And uh, I watch as many episodes of Californication as I can. Um... I really enjoy, it. yeah. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it. You know, back on Netflix, they had the original season ages ago, um, so uh, really cool to kind of catch up, pick up where I left off. And it really was easy to pick up where I left off, like from all those years ago. Um, it's David Coveney making a lot of bad decisions, doing a lot of drugs, and having a lot of sex. Um, but uh, there's a nice sense of whimsy to it. Uh, BoJack Horseman is a lot better than I expected. Completely way better than I expected. It has Will Arnett and about anybody you could ever want on a show that like is from the Daily Show or Community, for instance. Um, uh, it's from Community. I honestly, I should just look at the list. Uh, uh, what's your name, Brienne or whatever from from Community? I was surprised. Is is a regular? Are you watching it, Malengo? Yeah, because Missy was like, "Oh, you should really try and finish through it." And I was like, uh, "You should. Uh, you should." We were watching it that morning. Um, so I mean, those are my goes. Those those are my go tos. Um, I I really wanted to get into it because I watched a couple episodes. I'm like, oh, I don't know about this. Then then I listened again to another podcast that was like, yeah, it gets really interesting and actually kind of intriguing towards the end. So, um, but again, halfway through it, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, like like I said, anybody comedy you can think of, you'll start recognizing voices. We're like, that's is that so and so. I'm at the episode where they return to New York. I don't know if you remember that one, Mike. I don't know. I'm trying not to give away anything else. I don't know. I'm at the one where he meets his old friend. Oh, actually, no, I am at that one. I okay. do remember that episode. Okay. That episode was... See, the thing with that is I don't find it funny. It's just kind of like there. Oh, I find it hilarious. I kind of realized, like, the same way that I thought Seinfeld was funny, and the same <laughs> way that I think The Office is funny, other people are probably like, eh. So maybe that's what I'm getting from Bojack 
All right. Well, I think I'm gonna have to watch this to kind of break the tie on you guys. Yeah, I can't. I can't <laughs> tell. I can't tell Mike if he's gonna like it or not. Because honestly, I just Mike needs to go find out if he's gonna like it or not. Yeah, that's all. That's all I can say. But I that. also gotta say, it is a different show as you go. So if you didn't yes. like the first episode, keep going. Okay. Like give it, it, it's like just from the preview I saw, it looked like Entourage with a horse. I don't know if that's it. <laughs> I, I I never watched that much uh, Entourage, but I think kind of, sort of, yeah. Ha, see, okay. <laughs> yeah, kind of. This is what sucked about it, Sorg. I think my favorite episode is doesn't even involve BoJack. It deals with a roommate in a prison. Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, now, now I'm definitely going to How long is each episode? Is it like just 22 minutes? Or yeah, something yeah. like that. Oh wow! Okay, I'll be able to blast through them then. Uh, I saw The Giver, which was slow and not as good as. I'm sure this is the one movie that I now want to go get the book to justify why I watched the movie. Uh, Startup <laughs> Land, which is an entrepreneurial like documentary thing. Uh, I threw down twenty five dollars for this. Wow! And I don't think that I was pleased with it i kind of i'm still kind of like huh well that was a good entrepreneurial why? thing on their part why 25 dollars yeah, i pulled up the site that, do they call it startup plan because they charge you 25 dollars? <laughs> yeah. are we funding somebody's startup that, that's pretty ingenious actually <laughs> that's what i'm like this is a great marketing ploy to make back their money i missed uh they had a free showing at uh i think pittsburgh startup or something like that I think at the the Microsoft building, they had a startup free town. And a, yeah, yeah, and no, then, that, that, that's like it. yeah, it's somewhere else. Um, interesting. Pre-order yeah, and like it, the thing is that I thought they were they were gonna have more like in depth, like behind the story of the people starting and like their journey. It's not really that. It's more like a class on like. These are things that you need to do if you're starting this, and this oh, is how. Oh, it's, it's an edu. Oh, that's why it's so expensive. It's like webinars. It's, it's just a uh, very uh, spiffy webinar. Probably. Yeah. Um, and then I've been watching The Wire. I finished season four, which is probably the height of The Wire's awesomeness. And now I'm in season five, where I remembered where one of my favorite characters does something stupid. And this is how they wrap up the season. Hmm. But the wire, awesome, awesome. Uh, I you know I heard they're um re they they re uh redoing the 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 first season for release like for HD. Oh really? Yeah. So I might with that I might try picking it up again. So I watched like the first episode or two. And I just couldn't get into it. Um, and I know it takes kind of a bigger involvement. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, the thing that's awesome about The Wire is the same thing that people probably got disconnected from it. It's you, like the seasons build on each other and things like kind of are very transparent and entangled. So season one, even though it seemed like it's hard to get through it, the arc definitely goes upwards. Okay. Whoa. And now that we're going through a wind tunnel, Weird audio so happening right now. News. It's that time. That means it's time to wrap up the show. Po- uh, yeah, so the pod show. Let's put, let's wrap up the pod show, Malengo. <laughs> uh, so where can we find you guys, Mad Mike? Well, I am at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitters, and I just found out I can text group. No, oh, there you go. Yes. What about you, Sorg? I got stuff going on. Hey, I got a new podcasty sort of thing going on at Sorgatron.com. That's all I'm going to say about it. You can also go to SorgatronMedia.com for all the great shows. And, of course, I'm at Sorgatron on the tweets. Nice. And we also have a Facebook group, uh, The Rambling Movie Minute, where we like to throw up random polls. And that's where our community is. So definitely please join and have conversations with us. And tell us what movies that we should be watching and whatnot and whatnot and whatnot. Until next week, have a rambling movie weekend. <laughs>